Hello everyone, Aid Louis here with another update. This time I'm going to be talking about the widget library. Again, of course. So, what happened this week? As I mentioned previously, I completed the um, submenu uh, for the menu system that I have. So now you can actually um, have, have more options in your options. And the other thing that I worked on is a context menu. And uh, this took up most of my time. And if you think that this is all too boring and, and I should be working on creating more games, believe me, I'm bored too. But the thing is, this is good practice. And it's actually meaningful work because I'm going to be using all of this a lot. And the easier it is, the better for me later on. Besides, I, as I mentioned before, I'm, I'm planning to give this to the community as well. So hopefully everybody else uh, that's working on similar things would benefit from uh, all of this. And with that out of the way, let's have a little look at how uh, this is actually working. So the submenu uh, works exactly in line with the rest of the menu system. So if you look at how I'm generating the extra menu for the, the view options there, I over, I've already shown you the uh, the toggle menu, and now we have a submenu. And the submenu is quite similar to, to a regular menu item. They are actually based on um, the menu item, so you can have a leading icon and an alt code, which is not used again. Um, but it, it goes into one of the menu items. And once you give it a config, you can just build the contents of it. And you can, of course, build another submenu in it. It will work exactly like that. The only thing that I'm currently not handling is the positioning of the submenu uh, vertically. In some cases, when you have context menus that would go out of screen, they should position themselves, uh, you know, relative to the edge of the screen rather than uh, to the menu that opened them. But that's a minor thing that I'm, I will do later on. I also didn't care yet about scrolling the menus if they are too big, you know, if they are too uh, tall uh, and maybe not fit into a screen, probably. But again, that's something that I will do uh, later on. Uh, and this is something that I have to do for the context menus as well. As you can see, I have a little context menu on the list of entities that are currently in the system. This is just a, a little uh, readout for me that I can play around with. And if I right click any of those, it will list the, um, the current components on that specific entity. The gray ones are the built-in ones, and I have a few ones that should have uh, the black labels, which are actually my components, so I can easily find them. This is not an inspector or a hierarchy, uh, but it's good enough for testing. And another reason that I, I uh, created this uh, readout is to test how simple it is to populate the context menu with anything that you can think of, because these are coming from the world. So I haven't talked about yet how the context menu works. Um, so after I've shown you that it works, um, and I, it works with the other items as well. So here, here I have a little uh, thing to change the color of that box, which uses the radio group. And this is a toggle menu item to just enable or disable the border. And these are just, again, gimmicks and, uh, and unusual things that you would usually not do with a context menu because these require you to to read uh, parts of the uh, parts of the entity that you do not have access to during the generation of the context menu and wh wh when i'm saying generation of the context menu yes uh, i'm generating them the reason for that is simple the menus are not much. They are not holding up a lot of space to, to generate and, you know, just show and hide them all the time. They don't have to be generated on the fly. Uh, this view thing is generated when I'm opening the page, but it's always there. So if I click away, it's still there. It's just hidden. But you cannot do that with a context menu. The context menu can be attached to many things, and that could be potentially thousands of entities. I mean, think about a, a file panel where you have your assets, and each of the, the little icons should have a context menu where you can, I don't know, rename them or copy, paste, whatever. Generating all that 
immediately when you open that panel is, is just a waste because all of them will be the same practically and it it, it it's not justified to to have all of them generated at once so instead what i'm doing the context menu extension that i build the plugin will take care of right clicking uh, logic so you know right clicking on something that has a generate context menu marker attached will kick off the the process of generating uh, the context menu of that particular thing and to make this as simple as possible, I, I decided to, to use a trait extension approach. So you can attach a trait to your component. And if the, the components have this particular trait, I can generate a context menu for those uh, components. And this is a bit of a weird thing to to use with the uh, the reflection system but it works pro tip if you ever get uh, the archetype component and uh, this will give you a component id but this component id has a type id in the reflection system but it only points to itself so it's actually the uh, the the component and not your original struct that's being reflected. So you have to actually look it up and get back your original type ID uh, from the word for that component. Anyway, uh, the point is that I'm getting all of the, the context menu generators and then just generate the context menu for them. And if I were to show you one of these, um, let's see, here is the border size extension that generates the uh, border toggle menu item that I've shown you before. And this is it. it. It gets the UI builder for the container that's already open and you can add whatever you want in it. Normally you would add menu items and sub menus, um, uh, but I, I'm trying to, you know, validate that it's uh, feasible to use this in, in other contexts as well. I, no pun intended. So in this case, I'm creating a new component just to attach something that relates to the border. Normally you would attach it to the border, but the border is an external type and the context menu generator is an external type to the project. So I cannot implement that in this case, but that's fine. I, I for, for these very edge cases, I, I, I can just create a new component and, and don't care. And in this case, I had to create like two components because one is the, uh, the, the thing that generates the context menu. And then one that holds the entity in this case, the context that should change the border. So you can generate whatever you want here. In this case, it, this is simple. What's not simple is that both the radio group and the toggle menu item needs to be preset with something. So if I already selected one of the colors, this should be preselected. And you cannot do that for a component that is not related to the component it is controlling. Normally you would add it uh, to the component that you try to control from here. So self would point to your component, which has the data that you want to manipulate, which means that you can refill all of your menu settings. But in this case, I'm, I'm, I don't have that. So this is one of the edge cases that I, I'm, I want to make sure that uh, I can handle or the context menu system then can handle is the case when you do not have every piece of the data that you that you need to populate the menu. In this case, I have a system that sets the, the toggle menu items state whenever I add a border size control component. And this is done after the generation of the contest menu, but before it is shown. So I'm absolutely sure that the content will not be shown without the right state. This is done by, by scheduling the systems at the right spot, basically. And then there is an update that uh, detects when, when I'm changing that toggle menu item, and then I just update the border. Fairly simple. Uh, the same goes for the background color, which needs to read the current background color in order to 
set the radio groups value based on the current color. And that's fine. It also works the same way for the update. When I'm changing the radio group by clicking on it, I can detect that uh, the value is now this or that or the other one and just set the background color based on that. And the last context menu I have here is for, as I said, for the entity uh, component list. This needs word access because the word is the only thing that can tell the archetypes an entity has. And in this case, that's what I'm doing. I'm just getting the component uh, from the components from the archety archetype and uh, do a simple uh, concatenation or, you know, um, pre-processing of the um, of the name because it's, it's you, you know, it's a long name of the component. So you actually have the type path and I didn't want to print that. So it's just, you know, splitting it apart and taking the, the, the important uh, bits of it. But here is the thing. When you are working with the word, you don't have access to the commands, at least not straight out of the word. But there is a workaround for that, which I'm also using in the context menu to generate the container and, you know, to, to create the UI builder that I'm using to populate uh, all of the, uh, the content. So basically you, you have to create a queue and uh, you can create a commands from the queue and the world. And once you have the commands, you can uh, grab your entity and the uh, UI builder in my case. But the, uh, the key point of this is that you need to apply changes to the word manually after you are done with all of your changes. Otherwise it won't work. And that's it. That's a bit convoluted to do. I, I, I admit it's not the best way to, to reach out to the word and um, grab things from there if you need it. But again, I, I expect that most people 95% of the time will not need anything outside of their own component. So basically you would have a context menu per component and and how it works the context menu will add them one by one so so if you have multiple components with context menu generators i take all of them as demonstrated here uh, in in this little colored box i have one for the background color and one for the border they just it, the system just goes through them and uh, generates them one by one currently it's not ordered but i plan to add the standard ordering of the the of the item so you can add um, a number basically an index of where it should be and if there are gaps in the ids i just you know draw a separator uh, before going to generate the new content and in the rare case that you actually need um, things outside of your little component you can actually reach out to the word and generate con content based on the word this also means uh, by the way that uh, you will be able to generate anything inside the context menu you can add the color picker or a, or a preview of a texture or something and not just menu items it's designed for menu items because that's the usual way of using a context menu but it does not limit you to put anything inside basically well within reason drop downs will probably be not supported because they just not supposed to be in a, in a, in, in a container that you know um, is a hovering thing it's by itself so if you were to have a drop down here click it and then the whole thing would disappear but leave the drop down here that would be a you know bad ux with that said i still have to do tab views and uh, dockable panels and um, resizable columns and rows so while i slave away making components you have fun and uh, talk to you next week ciao ciao